The sternum is a kind of keystone. It is the central anterior articulation with the true ribs, which are ribs one through seven, and it also serves as an anchor point for one end of the pectoral girdle. It's also an origin and insertion point for multiple muscles. The sternum is often described as T-shaped, but I think it's shaped more like a short necktie. It sits directly anterior to the heart, which I think is handy both for protecting the heart from trauma and for compressing the heart during CPR. The sternum is made up of three parts. The manubrium is the superior part. The body, sometimes called the gladiolus, is central, and the xiphoid process is at the inferior end. The manubrium is the broad, flat part found at the superior end of the sternum. Its superior border is thick and prominently marked by the sternal notch, which can easily be felt through the skin at the base of the neck. On either side of the sternal notch, the manubrium articulates or forms a joint with the clavicles. This joint is called the sternoclavicular articulation, and it is a synovial, double plane joint, which allows a wide range of motion. Immediately inferior to this joint on the lateral borders of the manubrium, the depression for the joint with the cartilage of rib number one can be seen. Now, none of the ribs actually articulate directly with the sternum, but are attached via a short length of hyaline cartilage that articulates with both the rib and the sternum. These joints are hyaline cartilaginous joints and are synchondroses. Two muscles of the neck have their origins on the manubrium, the sternohyoid and the sternocleidomastoid. Both of these muscles originate toward the superior end. The pectoralis major also has a portion of its origin on the manubrium, as well as on the clavicle superiorly and the body of the sternum inferiorly. Now, looking inferiorly, the sternal angle is found inferior to the manubrium. The sternal angle marks the joint between the inferior border of the manubrium and the superior border of the body of the sternum, and also marks the location of the joint with the cartilage of rib number two. The joint between the manubrium and the body is called the manubriosternal joint, and it is a secondary cartilaginous joint, otherwise known as a symphysis. The gladiolus, or body of the sternum, is an essentially flat bone. There are a few slightly raised transverse ridges on both the anterior and posterior sides, and these correspond with the articular facets. It articulates with the cartilages of ribs three through six, and partially with the cartilages of ribs two and seven, right here. The articular facets for the cartilage are found along the lateral borders of the body. The pectoralis major muscle has a large part of its origin on the body of the sternum. The heart is located directly deep to the body, and for this reason, the body is the part of the sternum to which pressure should be applied when performing cardiopulmonary resuscitation. At the inferior end of the body is the joint with the xiphoid process. The articular facet for the cartilage of rib number seven straddles this joint, which is called the xiphosternal synchondrosis. The xiphoid process is slightly different from other parts of the sternum, as it starts out at birth as cartilage and eventually ossifies by adulthood. It can usually be felt on babies as a little bump at the inferior end of the sternum. Between ages 15 and 29, the xiphoid fuses tightly to the body of the sternum via a fibrous synarthrotic joint that allows no movement. The xiphoid process shares half of the articular facets for the cartilages of rib number seven and has no other articulations. The xiphoid process can be either solid, as we see here, or perforate, which means some have a hole in the middle. This is a hereditary quality, so it tends to run in families. The rectus abdominis muscle has part of its insertion on the xiphoid. The xiphoid is also an attachment point for the aponeuroses, which are thin sheets of connective tissue, of both the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis. These attach at the lateral borders. The linea alba of the rectus abdominis also attaches at the apex of the xiphoid. 
One important thing to note about the xiphoid is that when performing CPR, poor hand placement can result in the xiphoid being broken off while performing compressions on the sternum. As can be imagined, this is very hazardous. At best, the broken part can tear muscles. At worst, it could puncture the liver and cause internal hemorrhage and possibly death. So make sure you get CPR certified. So in review, what are the three parts of the sternum? At the superior end is the manubrium, the middle section is the body, and the inferior part is the xiphoid process. The sternum articulates with the cartilage of all the true ribs, as well as both clavicles, and is an origin and insertion point for several thoracic and abdominal muscles.